Retro Days. Some of my absolute favorite episodes of our show are the ones that whisk us away in the magic time machine to a not-so-distant past where we can inhabit our childhood bodies and rediscover some of our favorite activities of yesteryear. They're exciting, adventurous, and surreal in all the ways that we remember the 70s, 80s, and 90s being. However, those videos require us to depart from the present and engage in endeavors that often are hard or even impossible to recreate in the present. That's where today's episode comes in, because tomorrow is the autumnal equinox, which means there's still time for you to take some of our suggestions and recreate a retro-style equinox celebration to ring in the official start of fall. Grab your pumpkin spice coffee and settle in for a cozy welcome to autumn. To be clear, I'm pretty sure I didn't even know what the autumnal equinox was in the 1970s and 80s. Halloween? Well, sure, every kid knows about the most spooktacular night of the year. Autumn? Well, of course, it was my favorite season. But the autumnal equinox? I can't recall ever having a big blowout party for Mabin, as the pagans call the festival. It's within the realm of possibility that some science teacher along the way explained that it's one of the two times during the year when the sun is directly over the equator, giving us equal, equinox, equal, get it, day and night cycles. They may have further explained it marks the first day of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, but if a teacher ever did tell me that, I forgot as quickly as I ran out of the school at 225. Whether or not I celebrated in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I absolutely have celebrated every year of my adult life. As a Halloween-loving horror fan, how could I not? The first day of autumn is the gateway to spooky season. This is the time of year when I truly start to feel the Halloween spirit. Okay, listen. In my heart, yes, Halloween is every day. But if I'm being 100% honest with myself, I don't truly feel the Halloween spirit until the weather gets a bit chilly and the leaves start to turn. Come early September, I'm dipping my toes in, pulling out decorations, lining up my blow molds, buying monster cereals, and preparing my Halloween and horror movie lineups. But when the autumnal equinox hits, then I am all in. What does all in look like? Well, something like this. And this. Oh, and this. Even though some of those pictures may reveal decorations from the 80s, you may now be asking, what exactly makes an autumnal equinox celebration retro? Fair point, most people probably wouldn't attempt to take an already specific celebration and render it even more niche by adding a secondary theme. Most people. But the Retro Days team, as you've perhaps come to notice, are not most people. Let's start with decoration, since we were already on that topic anyway. Perhaps the most iconic of all the 80s-style holiday staples are die-cut decorations of the kind we'd find lining our school hallways come autumn. Considering the sheer number of these things in the classroom, they must have been the official decoration of elementary and junior high school, probably because they lent themselves so well to being tacked to corkboards. There's something particularly endearing about finding vintage die cuts at a yard sale that still have a decade's worth of tape on them, as if each year teachers or parents just layered another swatch right on top of the previous years, and the one prior, and the one before. Eventually, all the Halloween-centric die cuts would appear, but during the first days of autumn, the teachers slow played it with die cuts of scattered autumnal leaves, scarecrows, and uncarved pumpkins. For our Equinox party, though, feel free to trot out all of your Halloween die cuts. I'm talking witches, black cats, skeletons, haunted houses, and ghosts. Go ahead and tape those up around the house in whatever way you see fit. Another classic decoration that has had something of a comeback in recent years is the blow mold. If you're lucky enough to have had some vintage ones of the tabletop variety, you can scatter those around the house for mood lighting. There's nothing quite like the soft orange glow of a Halloween blow mold. If, on the other hand, you're not quite ready to deck the house out in Halloween decorations, quietly judging you, you can find plenty of generic autumn decorations that smack of the 80s, like a wicker basket filled with that cinnamon-scented potpourri that inevitably gives me a migraine. Otherwise, I'm thinking you should place gourds, pumpkins, and apples everywhere. Mm. Voice over John sure can get long-winded sometimes. It's almost like someone is forcing him to read these words. Huh. Well, anyway, you look super familiar to me, viewer. 
almost as if you've been here before and yet you're not yet subscribed. Well, let's get that fixed. Yeah, right down there. Yeah, at the bottom of the page. Got it. Now we get to hang out again every Saturday with brand new retro topics. See you then. Speaking of which, food is another important factor in recreating a retro vibe for the party. I always bake either an apple pie or a pumpkin pie, which arguably isn't specifically retro, but they are classics. I'll also bake some kind of harvest bread and top it all off with a particularly autumnal dinner, including things like butternut or acorn squash, hot cider, roast chicken, and things of that nature. Attempting to tie these foods to any one particular decade is ill-advised, though you could break out one of your vintage cookbooks, you have a stack of those like me, right? And choose your menu from there. I'm talking about something like Pillsbury's Harvest Time Cookbook from 1980, which is one of the pamphlet style you'll find in the checkout lane at the grocery store. How is a tater crust tuna pie autumnal? Well, I don't know, but you have to admit it is era appropriate. How about the Pumpkin Cookbook, first published in 1996? This one has all manner of recipes to use up the gourds you bought. Instead of your boring old pumpkin pie, maybe try this book's recipe for rum pumpkin pie pumpkin and raisin muffins, pumpkin pudding, and pumpkin cheesecake all sound delicious too. For dinner, there's braised pork with pumpkin, fried pumpkin, pumpkin ravioli, stuffed pumpkin, and, well, pretty much every other thing you could ever conceive of cooking with pumpkin. For beverages, let's go old school with hot spiced apple cider, which I'm sure you will spike with the appropriate amount of liquor of your choice. Oktoberfests and pumpkin ales are quite welcome at this party too. The easiest retro adaptation to our little soiree will most certainly be the entertainment choices. It's not hard, after all, to cherry pick 80s horror movies. Watching these flicks on a VCR can enhance the retro vibe we're all searching for, but I won't judge you if you prefer to go digital in 4K. One of my personal rules for September viewing is to save all the Halloween movies for October. Remember, this is more about embracing autumn than it is celebrating Halloween. Sorry, Michael, you'll have to wait your turn. Some of my favorite movies for the autumnal equinox include Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Pumpkinhead, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, Beetlejuice, and Poltergeist. I can't watch them all in a single night, but it's a good batch to choose from depending on what I'm in the mood for. Daniel over on the Cobwebs channel here on YouTube recently published a video on this very topic recommending a whole slate of autumnal movies. Some, but not all, of his recommendations included such classics as Something Wicked This Way Comes and Needful Things. For the full list and excellent breakdowns of what makes them perfect choices, head over to the Cobwebs channel. Video link down in the description. Now, I have a really excellent preview for you. When someone mentions bad dream to you, who do you think of? Who has the face that launched a thousand nightmares? Friday, that's who! And now he's back, but this time he's on the NES. Oh! Just like on the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, Freddy is ready to give you the fright of your life. The object of the game is to search through the buildings on Elm Street, look for Freddy's bones, collect them, and burn them in the high school furnace. Oh, there's a great effect that happens when your player falls asleep. You become a dream warrior and get stronger powers to battle the most feared horror legend of all time, a Freddy Krueger. Well, that's all for today. But tomorrow, we'll take a look at a version of Double Dragon for Game Boy. More edge tips, more power team, more video power. Game over. For games, as I often do, I reach for my NES and grab copies of A Nightmare on Elm Street, Monster Party, and Werewolf the Last Warrior. If you're more into the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, we can jam to Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Your 70s kid? Let's bust out Atari for Ghost Manor or Frankenstein's Monster. For board games, It from the Pit, released in 1992, is a good choice. Doorways to Horror, the VCR game, is another appropriate pick. It's guarding the treasure! What's it? That's it! You can't get away from it! Under the treasure wins, but watch out for it. Wow! You can't get away from me. Get away from me. I win. Play it. 
Outside of pop culture, it's important to also mark the change of seasons in a slightly more somber and elemental way. That's why, no matter what else I do, I always like to end the night with a roaring bonfire and a hot beverage like that spiked apple cider we mentioned earlier. Sitting around the crackling fire, watching embers jump into the sky as if envious of the stars, I breathe deeply and search for those familiar scents that will soon fill the air. Behind you, gathering in the darkness, are all the nefarious shapes of horror that revel in the autumn air and will only grow more substantial as October nears. They know, as you do, that Halloween is close at hand and the autumnal equinox has opened a doorway that will remain ajar for weeks to come. I hope you're prepared. If you haven't given Mabin a single thought, well, the good news is you have almost a full day of preparation. <laughs> the exact time of the equinox is Sunday, September 22nd at 8.43 a.m. For most of us, it just means we'll be celebrating all day Sunday. But before you run off to buy a case of beer, cider, and pumpkins, I need to know, do you normally celebrate Mabin? If not, will you join in on the fun this year? And if not, why? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments, and if you enjoy our content, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and maybe even activating that ubiquitous notification bell. It really does make a huge difference. Let's meet again next week to celebrate yesteryear, right here on Retro Days. Clicky clicky.